case, Klaus. The next student speaker is Natsi Nikki Bunchu, a student in gravitational physics at Indiana State. Um, hi, I'm Natsi and uh, I was a senior until three weeks ago, and I'm still a senior. Um, I'm going So the example of that, this is what it looks like on our data, and this is what it does to our interferometer. It makes us lose loss. So I'd like to draw attention to the uh, about the fifth hour uh, of this day, where the big peak is I think is about five weeks per earthquake in somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. And you see how our range when it often went down to zero because the interferometer and I just want to point out that we almost reached 60 megahertz right here. I was there that night, it was very exciting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, temperature. That's just one, uh, that's how Mother Nature can angry us and so in like really fluctuated temperatures. So on the day, on the Thanksgiving day, where you also you have turkey, you know, eating, enjoying your dinner, we have a mentula shut down. Nobody really noticed this. But it's a rare occasion because our HVAC system is awesome. <laughs> it's not the air conditioning you get in your bedroom. It's too fancy for us. <laughs> so basically, the temperature in the LBA will be stable like this every day, all day. But this day, in particular day, it happened to speed up. So I took a chance and studied what happened inside the vacuum chamber because it's just such a rare occasion. So what, how it accepts, uh, how it affects the suspension, that's what I'm interested in. So suspension sex was a temperature model. There's a postdoc in Stanford who has calculated 
is similar as possible with three parameters and thickness of the spring vertically and the young photolabs and total mass. That's all I care, really. <laughs> uh, so what does the model tell us? The DCDT does you know how much the suspension slack per degree change, uh, per degree such as change in temperature. For vertical suspension, we should have the slack of 100 micron per degree C. And it's negative because when the temperature goes up, the suspension slack because of the expansion of the Q. And for beam splitter, it's less, uh, negative 38. Large triple suspension, 37. And uh, small triple suspension, negative 6. By the way, if I going over time, just start to increase at least my first call. I don't think you have my notes. Yeah, so this is the result. Right here, the quantum ball suspension, it's, I find to be maybe 40 micron per degree C of change in temperature. It's all by prediction on most of factor of three. That's the issue. Uh, for the small triple suspension, it's all by uh, prediction by factor one by three. Not too bad. Beam splitter 2.25 and large triple suspension also I think, uh, also preaching by factor 1.2. That's yeah. So you notice that the triple or seems to do better in terms of agreeing with the model. It's all by a little bit because we don't have a reliable temperature in chamber temperature sensors. It's just really hard to get a sense uh, sensors in the chamber that we would have to get really expensive. So why? The real world is not perfect. Now you have this nice calculation of the model, the math all works out, but when you want to prove it, it just doesn't work that way. Thermal isolation in this case. So this is where our sensor is placed. It's around the final stage of phase mass in the quad, quadruple suspension. So I think I'm around for uh, acronym in this slide, right? <laughs> so uh, it's right here, right around the middle of the chamber, it's uh, less thermally isolated, so the temperature that it reads is going to be slightly higher than what the quadruple suspension actually feel up there because the thermal isolation from the aluminum cable is right here. So the spring, you can see on the slide, the spring is kind of right here. It plays really close to the aluminum cable. It's more thermally isolated. That's why the temperature that we from here is not an accurate representation uh, representation of what the blade spring actually feels, and that throws my calculation off. But for the triple that I mentioned, it's closer to reality and closer to the model because the table, the aluminum table that would be on the top of the quad, is actually down here. So the top plate spring that this is where the sensors are to make sure the vertical degree of freedom uh, of the, uh, the slag is up here. This is less thermally isolated. So the temperature that is right here is more accurate representation of what happens to the top stage of the triple suspension. That's why the, I was able to get a closer number to the model. And why do we care? That's an important question. Temperature fluctuation can cause blocking problem. When you try to lock the interferometer, you want to keep the mirror as still, uh, as still as possible to resonate the laser so we can detect gravitational waves. And lock loss. <coughs> if the suspension keeps sagging, it causes blocking problem because we can't keep it still. It's not only just saggy, it can pitch and yaw as well. <coughs> And lock loss, if we if we lock for a little bit and then suspension keeps sagging, we're not gonna have resonance for long. And this is the real data that I studied back last summer. This is the green laser power UK cavity. Back then I didn't know why, but now that I studied this, I think that it might be a temperature that probably the and green laser, we use the green laser to help with the alignment before we actually lock it. So this happened when everybody went home, nobody's touching it, for all the and the laser is just like, oh, I'll keep up. <laughs> so yeah, this, uh, this is the end of the equation, I think. It has a stable temperature, and this has a high temperature fluctuation within the LBEA. Back then, I didn't know it causes a problem, but 
what this I do because I need something to help solve it. Uh, as the average term, uh, LDA temperature went up, as you see here, this is the temperature, the rate by the internal resonance third, this is the suspension slag down here. So you notice that when the temperature go, uh, went up, the suspension slag down at around the same time. But actually, when the uh, at around this time, the temperature in the LBA actually always went back to normal. But these two, like the in-chamber temperature, still kind of slowly going back up. It took them three days after the temperature in the LB, LBEA went back to normal. We don't, we're not sure why. We have ideas, but it's not 